Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and you're here for our weekly wrap up. Um, not a vlog because <laughs> nothing really exciting happened this week. I'm a little bit crooked. No matter what I do, I can't ever quite get it right. Um, I am, however, if I have my dates right, this weekend is the mid-month book bash weekend. So I'm going to do a vlog this weekend. I'm going to hope my dates are right. You'll probably see this next Thursday of what I'm reading. Um, we'll see. If not, it'll be a pre-mid-month book bash vlog. <laughs> we'll see. It's kind of, it would almost be better if it were next weekend because next weekend is going to be more interesting. It's actually going to be the first weekend of summer for us, but um, we're going to do it for this weekend. We'll see. Um, yeah, so this is my kids' last full week of school. I'm videoing, I'm videoing, videoing, I'm filming this on Friday. So next week they have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then a half day on Thursday, and then they're done. And then I have an eighth grader and a 10th grader. Yikes. Um, my, my quest is always to have them like get dressed most days <laughs> because left up to their own devices, they won't. They'll just stay in their pajamas and watch TV and play video games. And we're trying to not do that. I did kind of make my son do sign up for summer reading at the library. So we will have some, some reading time with him, um, on tests, like standardized tests. He does really well on math and then it goes down on ELA. So that's something we need to focus on. Um, I may also, if I can convince him, do some out school classes, um, that are kind of fun ELA or maybe science cause his grades in science are surprisingly lower than they should be. Um, He's really good at size. He's interested in it. So I'm very perplexed as to why that is. So we'll see. Anyway, my daughter, she's she's 15. So it's even harder to convince her to do anything. But I did tell her she had to, had to get her driver's permit. Because the day she turned 16, I want her to take her driver's test so I can quit doing the the school pickup. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with me. Um, this is probably going to be a pretty short wrap up because I only have two books. I only finished two books this week. But that's fine. Um, my no buy, I don't know what to call this because it's not a challenge. It's more of a resolution to be very mindful about my book buying. I had a slip this week, but I corrected for it. So at the last Friday, I said, I'm going to allow myself to make an indie press list purchase this week. If there's something on the indie press list I want, that was my plan. Well, like on Monday or Tuesday, I got a a little email from Fantastic Fiction, which is a site where you can follow authors and then they let you know when they have a new title coming out. I got an email from them saying Alice Hoffman had two new titles coming out, which surprised me because I already have her next novel that's coming out in September, I think, on pre-order. So I went to go see what it was. And a few years ago, she had done a novella, a Kindle single called The Bookstore Sisters, which I read and enjoyed. Well, she's releasing two more novellas um, the bookstore wedding and the bookstore keepers, I think, to make that a trilogy. And without thinking, I just went to Amazon and pre-ordered them. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, wait a minute, I wasn't supposed to do it. Now, yes, I could have canceled my order. Maybe I should have, I don't know, but I didn't. And so I decided because of that, I was not going to make an indie press list purchase this month. In fact, I deleted the episode without listening to it because I didn't want to be tempted. Um, and bookish best friend asked me if I had listened and I told her no and I told her why. And she says like, that's probably good because it was all murder books and I do love my murder books. So there is that. But anyway, other than that, I am doing really well. I am having some pre-orders and back orders come in. So I will clearly, I'm sorry, I knocked my thing. I will clearly have um, books for haul, but not many. Okay, so I did want to touch base on something else. This is not a book that I purchased recently. I wonder if I can get that off. Oh, well, I'll roll about that. This is, I just wanted to let you know, this is a book that I am moving over from my TBR bookshelves upstairs to my immediate TBR bookshelf. And that is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. So this is Read Historical Fiction 2024 month. Um, I might just make it Read Historical Fiction 2024 summer because I have other books I have to read and I wanted, I want to do all the squares. So, you know, but anyway, I've had this book on my radar for a long time. I signed up for Book Riot's My TBR uh, recommendation service, like when it started. And I think this might have been in my first order. Like this, might, I, didn't, I just get the titles, I don't get the books. So I've had it on since then. And then the last, I don't know if it was the last time, I think the time before at the library book sale, I picked up a copy of it and put it up on my shelves. And it was just sitting there. And then today I was listening to um, the Strong Sense of Place podcast, which is a fantastic podcast. Um, and they were doing books set in New York City. And one of their recommended books was this one. And I'm like, I need to read this book. So 
This isn't a, this isn't I didn't purchase. I mean, I purchased it, but I didn't purchase it this week. Just to let you know, this is this came from upstairs and it's going to the downstairs shelf. So I don't know when I'll get to it, but there you go. So there's that. So the two books I finished this week. Um, the first one, I'll pull it right here, is for my uh, marginalized authors book group. We are meeting tomorrow, which is Saturday, which will be today if you watch this when uh, the video goes up. And it is Greta and Valden by Rebecca K. Riley. She is a New Zealand Maori, uh, Maori, I think I said that right, Maori author. Um, and this is sort of a family book. There's two siblings, there's actually three siblings, but the two siblings are Greta and Valden. And there's another sibling called Casper. Um... It's, it's a lot of banter, kind of light. I will admit this book did not hit for me. Um, there were things in it that I, I, I liked. There, there were a couple scenes where there's just really pure sibling love between Greta and Valden. I, I really appreciated that. Um, there's, this is also kind of a family book, both immediate and extended. And in the immediate family, I really liked the father. I, I don't know why. I found him hilarious. There's a part in, in there where he talks about a friend that he had that no one believes is real. So he goes on this whole thing to prove that this guy is real. It's not funny, but I laughed almost until I was crying reading. <laughs> so, and then they would refer to it again. Still not funny, still laughed. So um, yes, there were things I liked about this book, but there was a lot more that just didn't land with me. And I don't want to say I didn't like it. I just am not the target audience. I think I'm just too old. This is a lot about dating and that sort of thing. And I'm just not interested in it. Um, I, I didn't there. Okay. This is, this is actually a, a true critique of the book that I do think is, is a falling down of the book. This is a book that is alternating narratives between Greta and Valden until the end where the, all of a sudden they throw in some other people, which that is a problem, I think. But for the most part, it's just Greta and Valden. And there's n the exact same voice in both under both narrations. And I find that very annoying. I figure, I think that when you are going to do that, especially if it is in first person narration, which these are, you need to have a distinctive voice for each character. And it didn't have a distinct voice for each character. And the, the voice that was used didn't bring anything to the character. So I found that very frustrating. Um, I also was a little frustrated with the fact that, yeah, this book is called Greta and Valden, but really their stories are very separate. I would have liked much more in intermingling of their stories. Um, I found that I liked the secondary characters a lot more than Greta and Valden. Um, they have an older brother, Casper, who I like, but then he also has a six-year-old daughter who I love. Her name was Freya. Um, so yeah, but then there's also these other characters. There's a lot of these side characters or friends. I honestly can't tell you who they are. I've read the book. There were so many of them. I couldn't keep them straight. Uh, I shouldn't say all of them, but most of them I couldn't keep straight. I couldn't tell you who they were. So this was not, this one was not a hit for me. Bookish Best Friend struggled with it, but then she switched to audio and she said it was better on audio. Um, I, I'm assuming, I do know actually, because this was talked about on the audio file podcast. There are multiple, uh, multiple narrators and I think that would help. Plus you get the New Zealand accent. So um, maybe if this book sounds somewhat interesting to you and you're, but you're not sure, um, and, you know, you don't want to take just one person's opinion on it because I have more on that. <laughs> um, maybe check out the audio. I ended up giving this book a C. Um, we'll see what, well, I, I know what Bookish Best Friend thought about, but we'll see what everyone else at my book club thought about. So second book, and this is about ratings. Um, so this is a book that was recommended again through me through my most recent, my TBR recommendation. And um, it's called Auntie Poldy and the Sicilian Lions by Mario Giordano. Um, it is translated from the German. Mario Giordano is the son of Italian immigrants to Germany. So he was born and raised in Germany. <laughs> but his, his family was from Sicily. And so this all makes sense. This is also the third book in two months that's set in Sicily, which is telling me I should probably go to Sicily. I don't know why. I just have a Sicily thing going. Um, anyway. It's a cozy mystery, which is not my thing, but it sounded interesting. So I went and I looked at the ratings on Goodreads and Storygraph. It has a 3.4 on Goodreads, which is a little bit low for me, but a 2 on Storygraph, which is very low. And I almost chucked the book. I was like, nope, not going to read it. Um, but I was still like, there's something about, maybe it's just I wanted to go back to Sicily. I was like, I'm going to give it a try anyway. Well, gosh darn it, I really enjoyed this book. <laughs> um, again, Cozy mystery is not my 
is it's not my um cup of tea usually um and just as far as mystery goes mm, it's an interesting mystery it's not the best uh she clearly she does not play fair or he does not play fair i should say auntie poldy or they say she but the author of mario does not play fair um and that means that the reader is not given all the clues to figure it out on their own all that being said i didn't think the solution was anything shocking um, and there, is, there are some deus ex machina, deus ex machina, however you say that, you know, acts of God sort of thing. And I'm like, really? Huh? So there's all that. It, it, I did not go into it with a high expectation for the mystery, though. So I will say that. But I really loved Auntie Poldy. So Auntie Poldy is a German woman who was married to a Sicilian man. They divorced, but he was the love of her life. And he has died and she is heartbroken. And so she decides she's going to move to Sicily where all of his siblings are and drink herself to death. <laughs> and kind of along with this is her nephew, who is her nephew from her husband, ex-husband's side, who's like a writer who she says, come stay with me periodically and work on your book. That's, I'm, I'm assuming that is the author putting his own voice into the book. So Auntie Poldy goes to Sicily and she gets drunk every day except Wednesdays. But then... A uh, young gentleman, whom she had been teaching German, that's why she didn't get drunk on Wednesdays, because their lessons were on Wednesdays, um, is missing. And because this is a murder mystery, it's not a spoiler to say he ends up dead. Um, she has to go, she, she has to <laughs> go solve the mystery. There's a lot of booze. There's a lot of hangovers. <laughs> but she is a very colorful character. I enjoyed this book because of the character. Um, again, if I were looking at it as far as how a mystery is, I probably wouldn't give, I gave this a B plus. I would probably give it a C plus on the quality of the mystery, but the quality of the characters really carried it for me. Um, the book reminded me a little bit of the movie, The Princess Bride, because you get these, it, the narration is kind of, the nephew is telling the story, but it's, him telling what Auntie Poldy told him and you get these cutaways where it's all of a sudden the two of them talking, which is very much like in The Princess Bride when you cut away to Fred Savage and, and Peter Falk talking. That, that's what that reminded me of. Um, so that was was fun. There was a very interesting little celebrity cameo that I thought was kind of delightful. Um, so yeah, it was, I picked this up at the same time that I picked up The Innocent Angels, um, which I talked about last week. I had finished in, in quick succession I had DNF'd a book that was going to put me into, I DNF'd The Awakening because it was going to put, um, I'm sorry, my daughter just texted me. It's going to put me into a slump. I had read And Then She Fell, which kind of really shook me in, in an appropriate way. And I had finished Days Without End, which was very good and very moving. Um, but also I had, uh, I was struggling with an issue in it. So I needed something to read lighter palette cleanser stuff. So I picked up Innocent Angels, which was a hit. And I think that this was also a good choice for that time, the anti poldy books. So um, I'm very glad I read it. I am actually going to continue on in the series, although I think I'm going to continue on audio. I think these audio books, these would be really good as audio books. Um, they're very kind of action packed. They aren't super character driven. Um, you kind of know who anti poldy is. That's really all you need to know. <laughs> um, if you like books with older protagonists, Auntie Poldy is 60 years old and just, she gets drunk every day. She also sunbathes naked on her roof daily and all that sort of stuff. Um, that was a lot. Of, it, it was a great read. <laughs> so that is my reading week. Um, I am not going to say too much about what I am going to read because I have just decided it's easier to just kind of put down below everything that I have in progress, which is a lot. Um, plus, I will be talking more about my current, a little bit about some of what I am currently reading um, in my hopefully mid-month book bash vlog. <laughs> hopefully this is the right weekend for that. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Uh, thank you for sticking with me for however about 15 minutes this video is, which is kind of short. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't read as much this week is we're two reasons. I actually did a lot of reading this week, but... We're in big book summer and um, I figured out, not including Les Miserables, which is my year long raid, not including that, um, I think four of my books, there are three of my books, excuse me, are over 400 pages that I've got going. So just when you read bigger books, you tend to read fewer books because they're bigger. Um, so, you know, I'm not expecting through the summer to be reading um, quite as many books, which is fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah. So anyway, that was my week. Thank you very much for spending this 
15 minutes with me. Um, like, subscribe, let me know what you're reading down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.